My name is Dirk de Foss. I run a corporate finance consultancy in Cape Town. I've been advising uh, in the renewable energy sector in South Africa for the last three years. What's the advantage of renewables over um, big energy capacity generation? Well, there's several advantages. Firstly, the amount of capital that one needs to motivate uh, for renewables is far less than the amount of capital that you have to do for most conventional energy which requires far more capital to be invested. The advantage of that is that one can bring private sector investment more easily into the process. Renewables also are provide a, a, a larger degree of certainty because once they up the operational requirements of uh, renewables is far lower than conventional um, energy so their risk is much lower. Once again that uh, serves to increase uh, the attractiveness to the private sector who are looking for um, opportunities to invest in energy they, which they see as, an, in a, as a growing field and to do so without too much risk. There are other advantages, of course, there's a lot of capital at the moment that uh, is mandated to look at uh, and find opportunities for um, renewable um, energy, the clean development mechanism which we, which we know about, um, and pressures are going to increase. And you've got a scheme here which is an incentive scheme for renewables. Describe that to me. So our um, program in South Africa is more a process by which um, independent power producers are invited to submit their projects um, into, um, and, and should they be successful, they'll be able to um, sell the energy from these projects into the South African grid. It's a, it's a, it's a set um, uh, program. We call it the Renewable Energy uh, Independent Power Producers Procurement Program. That's a big mouthful. Mm -hmm. But um, effectively, it's a, it's, a, it's a process by which uh, there are several windows yeah. where a certain amount of capacity divided between uh, different technologies um, is is opened and uh, uh, and private developers are invited to submit their projects mm. for consideration. And you get a you, you, you bid a price against a twenty year contract. That's correct. So if you are successful and you get uh, selected initially as a, a as a preferred uh, bidder, you have an opportunity thereafter to go and uh, secure the financing that you had already in fact secured, but to kind of close it out, dot all the I's and cross the T's, yeah. and uh, uh, do the kind of things that uh, need to be done uh, before you start the construction process. Now, the way that one can become a preferred bidder yeah. is, uh, is on the basis of a 70% weighting on the tariff, and that tariff is a tariff that you say that you are able to provide um, energy or electricity into the grid um, yeah. at, and that is on an, uh, on an inflation indexed basis. And the other 30% um, weighting goes to economic development issues. Those issues include the extent to which you have included um, local procurement into your, um, your project, the amount of uh, local uh, equipment that will form part of your uh, building process, the employment of local people for instance, but also the questions of what you're going to be doing about socio-economic development in the area where the project will be sited, and um, uh, enterprise development in those uh, areas as well. So it's a range of, of, act of, of undertakings that are measured and on that basis, you get your 30% economic development score. That's then added to your 70% um, weighted tariff, and the outcome is, uh, is on that basis. And how 
how many rounds have there been and how many people have been appointed? So there have been four rounds that have uh, been bid. Uh, there are th the third round is um, due to reach financial close at the end of this month. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not participating in this round. Um, the fourth round uh, is going to is is still in the process. So we've had two completed rounds. The third round is nearly complete, uh, and the fourth round is in the works. So how many operators have come out of that process and are now providing renewable energy into? So. In general terms, there are around 20. The first um, uh, bidding round was, uh, to the best of my recall, 26. Um, the second was 17, I think. The third was 19. I'm not um, familiar with the um, fourth. That's still in the, yeah, in the works. In the works. So, so once all those providers are actually um, up and running, what level of renewable energy will be available in South Africa? Well, South Africa's got um, uh, something they call the uh, Integrated uh, Resource Plan. Um, there's been um, several iterations of it. The last draft was in 2013. It's another draft is, or a, a finalized draft is, is due um, uh, early next year, I believe. Um, but they were talking about as much as 14% of South Africa's energy being derived from renewable energy sources. That might change uh, as, as, as the process goes forward. Is this a useful and good process for encouraging both private energy providers and renewables? And does, it have other does it have lessons for other countries in Africa? I think the um, advantage of it uh, is that it gives a template, not necessarily one that can be followed uh, to the letter uh, in the rest of the continent, but it provides a lesson to um, other countries in Africa about what type of investments can be brought in and the type of uh, partners that one can bring in if one is serious about uh, renewable energy. One of the things that South Africa has been very good at is uh, policy certainty. Uh, renewables thrives on policy certainty. So it's less about the merits of the policy itself. Obviously that is, 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 is important but that uh, developers who are looking to become involved in a country for 20 years mm. can be confident that the, um, that the undertakings that are made to them when they are building these things is going to be carried through for the 20 years. You need to make a return over that period if renewables is going to work. And if you can provide that kind of level of certainty and clarity to investors, the returns that they require is actually very, very low. Yeah. And the returns, and lower returns means that the tariff that these um, projects can render also becomes lower. So it's about policy certainty, it's about taking a very long view. And if one can combine um, uh, that with reasonably good um, uh, attractive um, terms, um, w uh, you get a lot of interest. And uh, I think that's really the lesson for the rest of the continent, in my view.